my question is basically just about um, the crossover between um, the national team and NWSL. Like, how much of a bump do you think, do you anticipate maybe seeing from your experience and, and the kind of the, um, the attention that's on you guys right now? I think we saw already a bump in attendance um, even from last week's games and the American players hadn't even showed up yet. So um, what I hope and what I anticipate is that attendance will be up um, and hopefully we can carry that momentum throughout the rest of the season. And I think it's great that you know, we've gotten new sponsors for the NWSL. Um, hopefully more companies will, will take part and, and sponsor this wonderful league because I think Kelly and I both strongly believe that a strong domestic league makes for a really strong national team. And so we kind of want to just keep that success moving forward into the future. You've each played in uh, two World Cups before this one. How, how does this compare to um, 2011 and 2015? Like, what, what growth have you seen and kind of what do you expect this to, to do for soccer in the U.S.? Yeah, we both obviously have played in three now. Um, and we've both played different roles in each one. Um, I think with each World Cup, you know, 2011 was the first time we had made the final since 1999, I think. I think, yeah. Um, so that was, I think, when we lost in 2011, but we came home and the U.S. kind of welcomed us as champions. Um, and as players, we were a bit surprised by that, but it was a great thing for, for the national team. And then it also um, kind of, I think, helped us start the NWSL. And um, 2015 obviously was huge, winning, um, and then hopefully winning again <laughs> will continue to just push the sport forward um, in the U.S. and on the global stage. Um, I think that from the World Cup, it felt not different, but um, you do see a progression through the years and through the as it goes on um, in terms of just how it's being represented on the global stage and, and received, um, which is a which is a great thing. So hopefully that'll continue, and we'll see that in the NWSL as well. Maybe for both of you, it's been, what, about 10 days since you won it. Uh, it seems like it's been a constant celebration all, all over the country. What has been your favorite part? Of, is there any particular moment from the celebration that sticks out? And have you come down from it yet? Or is this something that you're just going to ride for the rest of the year? I think my favorite part was immediately following the game in the locker room, celebrating with everybody. Our staff was in there. And it's such a crazy, wonderful feeling to win one of these things and then to be in the locker room and to celebrate and everyone had a different role within the World Cup but to, at the end of it, be able to say like you contributed in whatever way you did to the success of this team. And so it's, it was just really celebratory and it just so much fun and dancing and lots of champagne. And I sometimes catch myself thinking randomly at different parts of the day, like I, I can't believe we won this thing. I mean. Um, I always knew that we were capable of winning it. Um, actually winning the sucker is, is, a, is a different thing. And so um, I'm still kind of riding that high. And, and there are times when, yeah, it still catches me off guard. Yeah, I would agree that <laughs> the locker room celebration is always the most fun just because it's such an intense environment for such a long time. Um, and throughout the tournament, you you it's kind of you go like this because you win a big game, and then afterwards you kind of get to not celebrate, but you get to enjoy that win and bask in the glow of a win or a big win. And then, but then you wake up the next morning knowing, okay, back to work. So it it was nice to finally exhale and actually get to celebrate and know there was no more games on the other side. Um, and especially like Becky said, to celebrate with our staff, we. People don't understand the amount of dedication and sacrifice that our staff um, gives, and they are, you know, people say we're the best team in the world, they're the best staff in the world. Um, so really thankful for them. And then after we got to celebrate as our, you know, little bubble in our core group of um, players and staff, we got to be with our friends and family who had been along for the journey in France, and um, that was awesome because they all got to 
ride the wave with us. And um, so being able to, to celebrate in kind of that closed environment with our closest people and supporters is, is, was one of my favorite parts, for sure. So much of this tournament was, and especially for, for your team, was kind of about more than soccer in, in a lot of ways. Can you just kind of give a glimpse into what the locker room was like on, on a daily stuff with, you know, Pino was kind of at the center of, of a lot of stuff. And just kind of some of those things that maybe were away from the soccer itself. How did you kind of, what was the team atmosphere like dealing with that, those sorts of things? We tried very hard to keep a bubble around the team. And obviously when the president is tweeting at one of your players, that kind of can puncture the bubble a little bit. Um, but I think the team did a really good job of just acknowledging it and then just kind of tossing it away, which we had to do because we had a job to do. And you know, we had to play France you know, the, pretty much the next day. Um, and so really nothing kind of can puncture that bubble. And we, I, as a team, I thought did a really good job of focusing on the things that we could control within that bubble um, and kind of just protecting ourselves that way. I, I got a couple questions, but I'll start with this. Uh, we, last week we were here talking to your teammates who came back from the World Cup, not quite as happy as you all. Uh, how do you integrate yourselves with them and will you guys be available to play this Friday? Well, that's a Laura Harvey question for availability to play. Um, but just coming back um, into the fold, which was really for us just today, you just kind of walk into the locker room and you have to like reintroduce yourself. We had been gone for like 60 days from this team. Um, but everyone was very happy to see one another. Lots of hugs, lots of congratulations. And then it's kind of like, it's time to work. We're back with Utah. It's now time to, to win this, this, with this season and to prep for the next game. So really, it's, it wasn't that big of a... Hey, you're back. It's like, okay, let's get to work. A yeah. couple hugs and then onto the training field for sure. Uh, it seemed like, well, once you got through the group stage, the games, uh, once you got to elimination, became closer, starting with Spain in the round of 16. How hard was it to, I guess, try and, and will yourself through those games that seem much closer than the group stage games did. Yeah, I mean, I think whenever um, you go from group stage, you make it into the knockout round, that's when it's kind of two different tournaments. You know, you're playing um, the group stage to advance, and then once you advance, it's like do or die. So it is a it is a lot different and it's a different mentality obviously all of our group stage games we wanted to win but there's an added pressure as soon as there's um you know lose and go home on the line so i think that the games were definitely closer but the competition um was maybe a bit better um but at the same time it's a world cup every game is going to be close especially in the knockout rounds and um i definitely felt different going into the Spain game than I did going into any of the group games. Um, and as much as people say like, oh, it's the World Cup, it's like your dream to play at the World Cup, it is. It's the best feeling in the world, like that is a dream and what every footballer wants to do is not super fun all the time, you know? Like it's it's a grind and it's it's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of expectation from myself individually and ourselves, um, but then from the outside. So yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, you have to flip that switch when there's, if you lose and you go home on the line. And it was, it was kind of funny, uh, before the final, we got a video message from Jose Mourinho, and he had a really good line in it saying, finals are not made for playing, they're made for winning. And that actually, I think, applies really well to all the knockout stages. It's not about playing beautiful, lovely soccer, although we wish we could do that all the time, They're, those games are for winning and you have to find a way to win. And I think we found ways to win that sometimes weren't pretty, but you know, we got the job done. Becky, <clears throat> excuse me, Becky, your career has been so long and illustrious, obviously. Um, what is it that keeps you going? And question for Kelly regarding Becky. Um, Everybody knows what she does on the field. What does Becky bring, just some of the intangibles that makes her such a viable teammate? Uh, 
<laughs> well, um, I think what keeps me going is really a love of the game and a love of this team, um, whether it be domestic or international, just I love the teams that I play on. I love the grind of it and the sense of accomplishment that you get every day. Um, and I also love that the global game is changing so much and so many teams are getting so good so that every, every year we have to up our level as a national team and as a, a domestic team even. It's just soccer is changing. And so the, the difficulty of adapting to it and learning, and for me, that's, that's what keeps me around. Um, I just love how much the game has grown for as long as I've played on the international level. And um, it's just nice to test myself and to see if I can grow with it. Let me count the ways that I love Rebecca Savran. Um, no, Becky, I've always said this. She's just, she's a gamer. She is, doesn't get enough credit for what she does and what she brings to the team. Um, she's probably our most consistent and just somebody that you can look at and just know that they're going to get the job done. Whatever the game calls for, um, they're up she's up for the challenge. And not only that, but she just leads in a way that is so respectable and um, genuine. Um, yeah, I, I love her. She's wonderful. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask about the final. So uh, it seemed like a really tough first half. Um, Kelly, you specifically came off injured uh, or uh, didn't come back in for the second. Um, can you speak to kind of the team's mindset in the first half, uh, what's talked about in the locker room at halftime, and then, um, Kelly, what it's like for you to get, to get subbed out and have to watch the second half from the bench? Yeah, I mean, first half, we went in with the game plan that we were going to um, high press them and um, play around them mostly, um, play. We, I, we, had a, we had a certain game plan, and I feel like we did pretty well with that. Um, it's a World Cup final, so it's going to be difficult. I think that they weathered the storm because I think that we did get a lot of chances in the first half, um, and we were down in their half for majority of it. Um, in terms of what they talked about at halftime, Becky can speak on that because I was busy doing other things. Um, and yeah, it was it was unfortunate to have to um, come off the field for the second half. Um, Definitely didn't want to, but it was the medical staff's call and um, got to respect that. And I knew that Ali Krieger going in was going to do a fantastic job. And I had every, um, you know, confidence, er, every bit of confidence in her to get it done. So wasn't worried about that. Um, it's not fun to watch the game from the sideline. Um, I've done it a couple of times in my career through big tournaments and thankfully didn't have to do it much in this one. But um, it was stressful. And, uh, but at the same time, I knew that, I knew that we would, we would get it done, so. Yeah, the halftime was mostly about momentum and how we had most of it, um, probably for 40 minutes of it. And then a couple of free kicks got a little wild in the last five minutes. And so going into halftime, it was, let's regain the momentum. They're getting a little tired. They had played, they had one day less of rest. Um, they had played extra minutes, and so really it was keeping the energy high, making them run, um, and just kind of grind them down. And by the end of that game, you could kind of tell that they were on their last legs. How much growth have you have both of you seen uh, from the fan base here in Salt Lake City? Obviously, you guys have played for other teams ar around the country. How much ha has it grown just in the, in the two short years of being here and around the fan base? I think when the team was first announced, I think the response was wonderful. And I think, you know, that opening day last year was incredible. And I think consistently we had some of the best attendance throughout the league. And so I think from the get-go, it's been really great. And I think if we can keep growing and adding more people um, to come see us play every weekend, um, I think that would be wonderful. I think this team deserves it. I think we can put a good product on the field. So um, I hope to, I think the support's been great, but I hope to see even more of it. Continuing the conversation with the fan base, you guys were on the other side of the Atlantic, yet seemed to have thousands upon thousands of US fans out there. How much of help was that? Oh, it was huge. Um, I was really surprised by the amount of American fans at the World Cup, even in the group stage games. Um, Rons was our first game um, against Thailand, and 
the whole stadium was USA, which was incredible. And um, I remember running out for the France game in Paris for the quarterfinals, and we ran when where we were warming up. It was all U.S. fans in front of us, and I remember looking. We we kind of section off into lines to warm up, and I remember looking at my line and being like. It's a home game, ladies. Let's do it. Like, didn't even wasn't even worried about um, it being predominantly French crowd, um, but it felt awesome to have that kind of support. It was incredible, and and all the games were just unbelievable to feel that support. It really, really does make a difference for sure. So, very thankful for that. How much um, do you think it's incumbent upon yourselves as not only national team players but World Cup champions to kind of help promote the NWSL versus how much is incumbent on the league itself to promote itself for growth and stuff? I think the responsibility falls on both. I think as individual players, I think we have platforms and followers that maybe the league doesn't have quite yet. Um, so I think it's, it's important for us um, and it's a responsibility for us to promote the league in the best way possible. Um, we know how important this league is to preparing us um, for the national team, but also within this league, you have so many wonderful players that don't play for the national team. And so I think it's really important that the league also recognizes that and keeps promoting these players that um, maybe don't play internationally, but are still world-class in their own way. So yeah, I think it's a dual responsibility. Obviously, she's not here, but Kristen, can you? She maybe had a little bit different role from you guys in terms of not always being in, in the eleven and whatnot. Can you just speak to to her role, and then especially the the one game that she did start? That just kind of what what that might have been. What was that that was like for you guys seeing her in that role? Um, yeah, no, Kristen did a fantastic job, and we we talked about as a team, and it's kind of just how we operate as regardless of who's starting, it's 23 players that win us a World Cup, and we genuinely know that and believe that. And um, and it's important that players who don't always find themselves in the starting 11 are ready to step into big roles and um, fill shoes if someone can't start. And Kristen's a great example of that. She did a fantastic job coming in in the, in the semifinal in the England game, scoring a goal and just playing phenomenally um, and doing everything that she needed to do to help the team win. And um, I think that's a testament to her as a player. Um, I don't think the fact that she wasn't in the starting 11 is indicative of you know who she is and um, what she brings to the team because she's a huge lift. And we kind of always laugh. We're like, well, can you imagine being the other team watching like Carly Lloyd and Kristen Press sub in in like the 75th minute and just not wanting to be on the field anymore? So I'd say that's kind of how we feel. Another uh, a topic that's come up during the World Cup, obviously, is the, uh, is the equal pay topic. How important is it to keep that at the forefront of the national conversation, even in the weeks and months after the World Cup? I think it's hugely important. And I think until that gap is closed, it should remain a point of conversation. And obviously, the narrative right now in society, equal pay is, is a big narrative. And um, for us to be able to lend our voice to it um, and to be maybe a a representation of that fight, um, I think is something that we willingly take on because we know how important it is. Uh, Kelly, it appears you may never have to buy yourself another beer for the rest of your life, right? Why did you say that? Somebody brought me a beer at the airport last night. I was like, is this legal? Can you do this in Utah? And they were like, I don't think so. And I was like, I'm going to put it in my bag just quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's not my question, but I, I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, how would you characterize this team? You guys were called everything from arrogant and cocky after that 13 nothing win to being just really, really good. How would you characterize this team that won the World Cup? We are really, really good. Um, but we also are humble, and we know that, and we respect our opponents. You know, we know going into every game we have to bring our absolute best because we know the opposition is going to bring theirs. And I think that the... Um, descriptive words used to describe the team have been interesting. Um, but like Becky said, during the World Cup, we don't really, I don't know, we don't, it, it, it's a strength of the team. We don't really care. We don't really allow that to come into the bubble and affect us. We just are so mission focused and driven um, that 
I think that's why we can say we are the best and we're able to achieve what we can because we don't we don't worry about the outside and um, the critique and the and the criticism and and um, maybe the negativity around the team sometimes. So, um, which I am proud of for this team. I think it's like I said. I think it's a strength. I also think it's it's unfair to misconstrue self belief as arrogance, and I think everyone on on the national team has put in so much to be there, to stay there, and we know what goes into it, and that gives us confidence, and it you know helps us believe in ourselves and one another, and if the outside world sees that as arrogance, I think that's unfortunate because to us it's it's self belief. I'll also say that like confidence for this team and with this team in particular, it's because we're so prepared. Our preparation is so, yeah, like strenuous and detail oriented to the point that people don't people don't understand. They don't know what we do as a team day in and day out, and the amount of attention to detail we pay um, to even the littlest things. So. I got asked that question during the World Cup, like you guys seem to be really confident and I wanted to say it's because we're prepared. Our preparation allows us to know that we've done every single thing so that whatever situation we encounter, we're ready for. And that's a, that's a testament to our coaching staff, for sure. Becky, you guys have both talked about kind of that bubble that you had to cocoon yourself in for the past 60 days with the national team and being focused on the task in hand and everything. Were you breaking that bubble very much, kind of keeping one eye on the league a little bit while you were away and, and sort of seeing some of the matches and the results and the table was shaking up fairly constantly around here? How much were you kind of looking at that and maybe ribbing Tobin or, or Pino or somebody, somebody on other teams during games? and Yeah, that kind of thing. But, but how, how much were you guys doing that a little bit? No, it was definitely, we would keep an eye on it, um, and we would always talk um, with the national team about how our, our individual clubs are doing, and it was, the games were being played in the middle of the night for us, and so we would wake up, and we would check out the results and the highlights, and then you would go to breakfast, and you would talk about it and, you know, tease other people, so, you know, we were keeping an eye on it. I, I didn't have a hide your VPN, so I couldn't have watched any of the games if I wanted to, but um, it was always nice to kind of wake up and be like, all right, how did the girls do? I woke up in the middle, I think it was, we had played and then they were playing at like 1 a.m. and I, or two or something, and I remember waking up because you can't really sleep after games and going to the bathroom at four and like checking Twitter to <laughs> see like what the score was and being like, oh, it's still zeros, but like I gotta go to bed. So um, yeah, we definitely paid attention to it for sure. Out of the entire month, month and a half that you guys were gone, what is what are some of the experiences that both of you kind of felt like were unique, either with the fans, with the media, with uh, you know, on the field, just kind of some that stick out to you? Um, one of my favorite parts of the World Cup, I think, was running to Alyssa after the France game um, and just hugging her and, because everyone knew that that game was kind of going to be the game. You know, we didn't want to look ahead too far and we did a good job of not doing that, but it was the game. And I think knowing that Alyssa had kind of been put in the spotlight in an unfair way as being this untested goalkeeper and um, for her to come up so huge in that game and for the team in itself to just come up huge in this huge moment. Um, I just remember that hug and um, everyone just being so genuinely excited that we had you know, kind of gotten over that first huge obstacle. Um, so before, t Becky and I were roommates before the Thailand game. Um, so our first game, and I had just been in media, and even when we did media in New York um, for the whole like car wash Twitter at Twitter headquarters, all the conversation or all the media questions were, well, what do you think about the back line? What do you think about Alyssa Nay? Or like, how do you think it's gonna go? And I just remember being annoyed and being like, 
it's gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. Um, and Alyssa's gonna do great. And um, just knowing that was a narrative that the media was pushing. And I went and did media in Rons, went back to my room, Becky was in the room, and I was like, Becky, I'm so tired of the media asking how the back line's gonna fare and how Alyssa's gonna do in this World Cup. And I said, we need to shut them down to shut them up. And so after the final, we all took a picture of the back line and Alyssa, because um, we shut everybody down and we shut everybody up. And I love that. And I'm really proud of the back line. I'm really proud of um, the way that we stuck together and just uh, prevailed. Final question here. Prior to this uh, World Cup, you, you guys had won um, Olympic gold and another World Cup. How does this compare to that? Like, do you rank them in your minds at all? Like, oh, this was my favorite. Uh, can you just kind of walk us through what each of those wins was like and how they differ? Everybody always is like, Olympics or World Cup? And I'm like, both. Um, but I don't know. As I feel like my career's gone on, World Cup is pretty amazing just because it's football is the center of the global stage and of everyone's eyes are on them. Um, but the Olympic, winning Olympic gold medal is pretty awesome as well just because it's such like an American feeling. You have all these other athletes competing. You're Team USA, um, not just with your teammates on the soccer team, but with all the other athletes competing at the game. So um, they're different. They're just very different feelings for sure. But I don't think you can rank them. Maybe Becky can. I don't know. No? Listen, gold is gold, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, it's, it's tough to rank because each one has its, yeah, it means something different and the build up to it's different and the team is different and maybe the coaching staff is different and you go through different challenges and you celebrate different things and so it's, it's really hard to, to even compare them. I mean, they all feel amazing, um, but it's, each one is just its own, its own little beast. <laughs>